Good morning, folks. Yesterday, I saw ice on with my own eyes for the first time. This morning, it's slightly cloudy. The moon is right in the way, and for those who caught the fly on the wall for ice on yesterday, I submit wholeheartedly that magnitude calculations of that comet must be being affected by Mars right now. Now, I don't have the ultimate scope or any real good way to get the pictures to you, but my Celestron is no slouch, and the haze and light pollution from Mars' reflection of sunlight is slightly blocking the little green-gray smudge that is now clearly a comet even in modest scopes. I understand that that green color is being seen across the planet, which means she's heating up. Here we go, let's keep watch. We're starting in southeastern Australia, but north of Tassie, where the high pressure is finally going to move on and allow some rain to come by Tuesday. North of them, latest typhoon in the South China Sea, Vietnam's taken a disproportionate number of these. The south pointing bulb of clouds and storms moving eastward from Spain across Italy and north as well as that same low pressure that's kept our focus, the storms are going to stay on that leading edge. Let's go a little next level with the US and Canada. We have two lows to the north. The western low crested off the Pacific two days ago and has hammered the coastline. This will bring snowstorms to isolated parts out west, becoming less scattered to the north. The eastern low. It's a double trough that has a thin but active convergence tail extending well south. It's barely visible here. That will change when the sun comes up, speeds up the wind. The storms are on that convergence like Reggie Miller on the Knicks in those last 27 seconds. You can see the thin storm line and snow out west here. Looking at a week's worth of rainfall in Africa, followed by a week's worth of accumulation for flood threat potential and landslide risk. I've denoted those watch zones with the white arrows. I've done the same thing for South and Central America. I may want to go with a different color next time. Magnetic connections of the inner planets here. Mercury and Venus had shared their stellar connectivity for days, but the closest to the Sun has now hopped to the backside with Mars. Folks, this fits the dictionary definition of flaring, but only technically. These are pitifully weak, and the sunspots are not Earth-facing as of this morning. We're back to the solar wind. Now look at the scaling on the left. Speed has stayed under 300 kilometers per second, and plasma temperature in green is barely over 1,000 degrees Kelvin. That's too low, too weak, and could make for major geomagnetic storms if this holds until the coronal hole streams arrive. Until they do, the magnetometers are calm worldwide and the electron flux is showing calm and quiet conditions. About two or three days for those coronal hole streams as those coronal holes are departing the Earth-facing position now, diagnosed here as moderately strong at best. Apart from the aftershock potential, the major seismic risk is waning slightly and will make mention once more of that North Pole shaking in the seas north of Russia. You can see these coronal holes here, departing the disk, their arrival is something Pakistan will probably never forget. If you missed it last night, the observers have a comet named after them, even if it's unofficial and a now dead comet. Just having a bit of fun. No fun though for this filament. He's been asleep under our ward for a week and he's about to go off on his own. More shots of our star to close? Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.15am Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.